So we're going to look at a model student paper today, um, the introduction specifically, um, to see if we can get some ideas about how we might make our own introduction for this argumentative paper, um, why I hate dot dot dot. So remember your task is to think of something like a cultural icon that most people really love and you need to make an argument for why you really don't like this thing. So we want to make sure that our, our, our introductions are not only introducing the icon, the film, the person that you are um, that you're going to be writing about, but we also want to see your thesis statement. So let's turn our attention to this uh, sample and see if we can't get a little bit of insight into what might be a, a good way to start our own paper. So the title says it all, and, and you don't need to do a title this direct. Um, you might want to be a bit more um, a bit more provocative, a bit more um, interesting, get your reader thinking. This writer wanted to get straight to the point, why I hate The Little Mermaid. Okay, so we already know what we're going to be looking for. I love The Little Mermaid, so I'm really going to be curious as to why this person does not like one of my favorite Disney films. So they write, no other company has managed to package and sell childhood memories like Disney. While today they remain a corporate Goliath, Disney was once a simple animation studio which specialized in retelling folk fairy tales. All right, so they have hooked my attention already. Again, I love Disney, I love The Little Mermaid. I am definitely intrigued um, because they are basically telling me that my childhood memories, my love of The Little Mermaid is a packaged and sold thing. So when you write your own paper, um, you might want to think about how you can, who you're writing to, but also how you might get their attention because it is different for every reader. Um, so starting with Snow White and the Seven Dwarves released in 1938 and continuing into the modern age with the great popularity of Frozen, another an animated film based on the Snow Queen. So they're going through some of the background um, of Disney. Again, you'll want to give some context as well in your paper because your reader might not be familiar with the cultural icon that you are uh, going to be talking about. Typically these tales detail a distressed damsel who is eventually saved by a prince, although these tales have slowly shifted to portray independent female protagonists solving their own issues. Given the time of their premiere, the older Disney films typically carry outdated ideals. And as such, I typically find them to be somewhat problematic. But I've learned to contextualize them and understand that challenging the normal gender standards of the 1900s would not be profitable. So I want to pause here. Um, our writer has done a couple of things. They've caught our attention. Again, because they understand the reader. They know that I might have a different view of Disney than they do. They've given me a little bit of background into typically what their films are about um, in this genre. So they mention Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, um, which was the first Disney film. And then they go all the way up to the present with Frozen. I'm familiar with both of those. And essentially they're starting to build their argument like, hey, these kind of have the same um, organization. It's always a woman in distress that needs somebody to save her. So you're gonna also at some point in your paper after you introduce your topic, and I want you to think about this. This is not a very long introduction. So um, the author knows that she can go into more detail as the paper goes on, but she's giving me a little bit of uh, a taste of what she might argue. So now I'm getting a sense that she doesn't like the damsel in distress part. However, it's not really worth it to look at Snow White, for example, because that was made in a time where um, Damsel in distress was a typical trope and it was part of the way society was organized. Yet she's telling me society is not organized this way anymore. So I'm not sure our film should be either. Let's keep on going though, because I still don't know why she hates The Little Mermaid. I got to keep reading. She's making me continue. However, there is one film which continuously irritates me as it lacks the context of older Disney films while still, I think she's trying to say, perpetuating the same outdated stereotypes. Okay, again, in one single sentence, our author has given me um, a pretty clear view of her thesis that Dis this Disney film seems to perpetuate outdated stereotypes despite its situation in a more modern society. I also wanna point something out. 
this author chooses to use the word I. They are including themselves um, in their argument so that you know this is, this is uh, unique to them. I want you to choose whether or not you think I would help um, help further your argument. And I know that seems a little silly because the, the whole premise of the paper is why I hate. Um, however, there are ways that you could expand your argument. So it's why something should be hated by a larger group, not just you. Or you can keep it to yourself because typically um, you can make an argument for um, not only why you hate something, but why because you don't like it, a larger group shouldn't like it as well. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, so we've got one more sentence left and I have a feeling this is gonna really um, specify what the author is trying to get us to look for. Um, however, above all, this Disney classic encourages reckless and selfish behavior, excusing it as young love. This film, unmasked underneath an undersea splendor, is The Little Mermaid. Okay. So now I wanna do a little check with myself. I know the author doesn't like The Little Mermaid. Um, I know a little bit about Disney now and their attitude towards Disney, that it tends to uh, sell films to young people that might be promoting stereotypes that aren't um, the best. But this film in particular, The Little Mermaid, um, not only does that, but it encourages, in the author's words, reckless and selfish behavior and making it look attractive. Like, oh, it's true love, they need to be together. Um, so. When we look at this introduction sample, we can take a few things away with us. We definitely need to make sure that our, that our reader knows enough context about the topic where they can understand your thesis. If they don't know anything about Disney, they don't know anything about The Little Mermaid, you're gonna need to give them a little bit of um, context without going overboard. Again, I want us to look at the length of the introduction. Also, this author makes sure we leave the introduction knowing what they think about the thing they're writing about. So as you go through your own writing, I want you to make sure that you do those three things at the very minimum, and you can do them any way you want. Again, this is how this author chose to uh, word their thesis, organize their introduction. Um, you're gonna have your own approach because you might be thinking of a different audience. However, those three core things, a little bit of introduction, a little bit of context, and definitely a strong understanding of what your stance is on the cultural icon, movie, person, place thing um, is needed to make that introduction successful. So as we look at the, at the models uh, that we are given in class, make sure that you are kind of categorizing and cataloging um, the moves that they make um, so that we can then transfer those elements of their paper onto our own writing.